Okay, let's now look at the problem of classification and see how uh, we can use uh, or we can link this to the uh, discriminant functions, how to define a discriminant function for classification and so on. So, so the problem of uh, the problem of uh, classification, what is the problem? So the idea is to assign the input, a physical object, event or phenomenon to one of a pre uh, to one of the pre -pre specified categories or classes. The block diagram of, the, of a, a recognition system or a classification system is, is as follows. This is an example. So uh, let's say we have a raw data. We have a transducer. In the case of computer vision, we have a camera. So we have a scene, we have a camera, we have this data, which are pixels or images here. We extract features from these images and then we perform classification in the feature space. So we have a classifier, which would tell us this is class one, class two, class three, depending on the number of classes we have. And we can see that uh, um, uh, feature extraction perform some sort of uh, dimensionality reduction in the sense that instead of uh, working straight uh, with uh, the pixels or with the images to perform classification, we ideally would like to extract some features. So a classifier, a neural network classifier would be like this. So let's say these, these are the pixels of your of your um, uh, image and so you perform classification uh, or these are the features depending on so this is the classifier the output would be one of the classes so in this case you have r classes class one or class two or class r so we would like to uh, first look at an example to see how we are going to, uh, how we are able to automate the process of uh, classification in this case of sorting incoming fish on a conveyor belt according to their species, to the type of uh, fish, whether it's a salmon or a sea bass. So what do we do? We set up a camera, we take some sample images, we note the difference, the physical difference between the two type of fish, let's say the length, the lightness, the width, the number and shape of the fins and the position of the mouth. So this is the, this is, so this is the, 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 the image that we get. So what do we do is to pre-process. So maybe clean this image, remove the noise and so on, extract some features. Uh, as we said, these can be geometrical features. They can be like the length and the width they can be uh, uh, brightness or lightness of the pixels. So, and then we use these features to perform classifications to say that the, if this fish is coming on a conveyor belt, we have a camera and we tell us this is a salmon or this is a sea bass or, so in this case, we have only two classes. So, when you perform classification, you have a cost of misclassification, which depends on the application. So is it better to misclassify salmon or sea bass or vice versa? So if you put a salmon in a can of bass, you're going to lose profit because salmon is more expensive than sea bass. If you put bass in a can of salmon, you're going to lose customers because the uh, customers were expecting an expensive type of fish, which is the salmon, and they get the sea bass, so they're not going to be satisfied. So there is a, a cost to your misclassification. There is a cost associated with your decision. So you would like to make a decision to minimize a given cost. So you have a, a cost that you would like to minimize. And the feature extraction, in general, it's problem and domain dependent. So it depends on the problem in hand. Uh, so in this case, 
you have uh, to classify sea bass versus salmon. So you would like to look for the most appropriate features which are going to uh, uh, allow you to perform good or accurate classification. It would require, if you're not using deep learning, where you learn your features, if you're using um, handcrafted features, you need to, rec uh, this requires knowledge of the domain. And of course, a good feature extraction would make the job of the classifier trivial. <clears throat> so let's look at how we perform classification using a Bayesian decision theory. Uh, Bayesian decision theory is a fundamental statistical approach to the problem of pattern classification. So the decision making is performed when all the probabilistic information is known. So for given probabilities, the decision is optimal with a Bayesian uh, decision approach. When your information is added, it is assimilated in an optimal fashion for improvement of your decisions. These are the properties of a Bayesian decision. So let's look at our example, the fish example. So each fish is in one of the two states, either a salmon or a sea bass. And let's denote this W as the state of, our, of, of nature, meaning that if W equal W1, it's a sea bass, is W equal a W2, is a salmon. And the state of nature is unpredictable. So we don't know this W. When, we, uh, when the fish comes on the conveyor belt, we don't know whether it's a sea bass or a, uh, a, a salmon. So it's a variable that may, must be described prob probabilistically, meaning that it's a random variable. It can take a value with a certain probability. So if the catch produces as much salmon as sea bass, the next fish is equally likely to be a sea bass or a salmon. So if we define a probability P of W1, which is a priori probability that the next fish is sea bass, and PW2 being the a priori probability that the next fish is salmon. So if we assume that there are uh, all other type of fish are irrelevant, so the sum of these probabilities of these priors should be equal to one. And the prior probabilities reflect our prior knowledge. For example, the time of the year, the fishing area, meaning that if uh, in a certain fishing area, there is more salmon than, um, than sea bass, then we are going to say that PW2 is greater than PW1. And uh, for example, this is 0 0.7, this is 0 0.3 because their sum has to be equal to one. And then if we are expect, you know, when the sea, when the fish comes on the sea, on the, the conveyor belt, we would like to make a decision without seeing the fish. So if we decide that W equal W1, meaning that it's a sea bus, if we decide on W1, if the probability of W1 is greater than the probability of W2. And if we decide on W2 otherwise, this is okay if we're deciding for only one fish. For example, if, if PW1 is equal to 0 0.7 or probability, a priori probability that uh, the, uh, for a, for a, a C bus equal to 0 0.7, which is greater than 0 0.3, uh, then it's okay if we're deciding on only one fish. But if we use always the same decision uh, approach, then every time we have a fish, we're going to assign it to the same class because the probability is greater of sea bass is greater than probability of salmon. So that's not a good decision approach. So in general, we will also have some features and more information. So the features can be the lightness measure. Okay, so how light is that, you know, the, in the image, how light are the pixel values? So different fish yield different lightness reading, uh, meaning that uh, X, our, our measurement, our lightness measurement is a random variable. Also, it will take a certain lightness measurement 
with a certain probability, okay? So if we denote the probability of X given W1, meaning this is the class conditional probability density, meaning that what is the probability? So knowing that uh, this fish is a sea bass, what would be the probability of having a certain brightness? So it's a probability density function for X given that the state of nature is W1. In this case, it's C bus. The difference between PX given W1 or assuming that it's a C bus and PX assuming that it's a, a, a salmon describes the difference in lightness between a C bus and the salmon, okay? And this is a, a hypothetical um, um, probability density uh, P of X given or uh, given W I. So this is the P X given W one and P X given uh, W two. So this is a hypothetical class conditional probability density functions, which are normalized, meaning their area is uh, under the curve is equal to one. Suppose that we show, that we know, sorry, suppose that we know the prior probabilities, meaning that we know the a priori probabilities of having a C bus and a priori probability that we have a salmon. And we know also the conditional density, uh, uh, conditional densities, meaning if the salmon is, if the, if, if the fish is a salmon, is a sea bus, we know what is the probability of having a certain brightness. And we also know the same for the case of uh, if the fish is coming from a sun or is a salmon. And then we measure the lightness of a fish, okay, X. So what we would like is to classify the fish. We would like to find out what is the category of the fish, PWI, uh, WJ give, given X, meaning that if we measure the lightness, if our camera measures the lightness, what is the probability that this is, uh, uh, that this is coming from a, this is class one or class two, this is C, C bus or salmon. So for this, we use the base formula. So given the prior probabilities, PW1 and PW2, and the conditional probabilities, Px given W1 and Px given W2, we want to measure measurement, and then we have also given a measurement of a particular item, the feature value. Okay, so we would like to use the base formula, which is given by this simple formula here, to, which says that the category of the fish given a certain brightness, equal to this conditional probability P of the lightness given WJ in this case, because we are deciding whether this is from class J, the a priori uh, probability PWJ divided by this PX that we're going to see what it is. This is called the posterior probability, okay? This is called the likelihood this is called the prior, as we've seen, and this is called the evidence. And we know that a joint PDF, PWJX, is given by this formula here, PX given WJ, PWJ, and it's also equal to PWJ given, uh, uh, given X times PX, okay? So now if we sum these two on the, this equation here and we sum on both sides, just like if you're integrating on both sides, and you know that the sum of the, this here, sum of all i, meaning i equal one and i equal two, i equal to one. So we can have this evidence P of x to say that it is equal to the sum of P of X given W I, P W I. Okay, so it's in the case where we have two classes, I equal one and two. So it's P X given W one, P W one, plus P X given W two, P W two. 
okay, where this is again, is the likelihood and this is the prior. Why this is called the, the likelihood, Px given Wj, is called the likelihood of Wj with respect to x. The Wj category for which P of x given Wj is large is more likely to be the true category. Okay, that's why it's called the likelihood. P of x is the evidence. It says how frequently we will measure a pattern with feature value x. And also it serves as, is as a scaling factor, which guarantees that the posterior probabilities sum to one. So these posterior probabilities sum to one. Okay, so it's an, a, so this is uh, an example of the posterior probabilities. And in this case, so it's, this is for the particular case where you have your prior P of having a C bus is two thirds and the probability of having a salmon is one third. And then at every point X, so at this point X here, so this is your X, this is your lightness. So at every point, the, the posterior sum to one. So their sum is equal to one. So this value plus this value equal to one. And as you can see here also zero plus, this should be one because their sum at every point is equal to one. So what is the error in, in this case? Because we're going to, what we're leading to is, we're leading at these decision boundaries or defining the decision boundary, boundaries for this classification problem using a Bayesian, a Bayesian approach. So the probability of the error given a certain br brightness is equal to PW1 given X if we decide that this is W2 and it's equal to PW2 given X. Uh, if we decide that the class is W1, this is the error we're going to make given a certain brightness. And for a given X, we can minimize the probability of error by deciding that it's W1 if P B W1 given X is greater than PW2 given X and W2 otherwise. So this is our um, our decision rule, if you want, to minimize this probability of error. We can write it in this manner as well. So we decide that it's class W1 if PW1 is, if, if the posterior of W1, PW1 given X is greater than the PW2 given X and we decide W2 otherwise, which can be also written in the, under this form. So it is decision one, we decide we take, we decide that it's W1 if this posterior is greater than this posterior. And then if it's inferior, then we decide that it's W2. Or because of the, uh, because of the base formula, so we can replace this posterior by uh, by the likelihood times the prior on both sides. And then the P of X would simply would, would cancel. So we're going to have this, we can write this as follows. So P of X given, so the likelihood times the prior for W1 is great. If it's greater than this, then we decide that it's W2, uh, W1. Otherwise we decide that it's W2. This is equivalent to if we divide or bring this term here or this factor here on the left hand side. So we're going to have this, this condition, this rule on deciding whether it's W1 or W2. So this one here, this term, or uh, this side here is called the likelihood ratio because it's the ratio of the likelihoods and this is a, 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 the ratio of these posteriors, which can be a, a set as a threshold, okay? And the uh, probability of error in this case is the minimum of the posteriors. So let's see what are the decision boundaries again in this case. So classification as division of feature space. So 
So when we do perform classification, we divide our feature space into non-overlapping regions. In this case, R regions, okay? In the, in the case of the sea bass and the salmon, R equal to two. And then these, a, a, a feature vector belongs to XK, meaning that we, uh, this, this, this uh, belongs to class WK. The boundary decisions, or the boundary, sorry, between these regions are known as decision boundaries or decision surfaces in the multidimensional case. So the criterion for the decision boundary is to minimize the misclassification or to maximize the correct classification. And then, so if you want to maximize the correct classification, you can here write it in the, uh, in the in, you know, you can go through this, uh, this mathematics and, uh, and the, the condition is to maximize the posterior probability. So you take the, um, this is the rule basically for any J different than K, you should have PWK greater than PWJ given X. Again, it's the maximum posterior. Uh, <laughs> so the discriminant functions determine the classification by comparison of their values. So you classify X as belonging to this class if, if the decision boundary or GK of X is greater than GJ of X for any J different than K. And the, in this case here, in case of the uh, Bayesian classification. So the optimum classification is based on the posterior probability, PWK given X, maximum posterior uh, probability, okay? Any mo monotone function G may be applied without changing the decision boundaries. So we can use G, uh, G of K as G of uh, PW or the posterior. Um, and we can use two discriminant functions, G1 and G21 for W1 for class one, W1 and the other for class W2, or we can just simply take the difference between or use a single discriminant function and uh, which is equal to the difference between G1 of X and G2 of X. And this is the formula for the case of, uh, of the Bayesian approach of the, disc of the, of the two category or discriminant function. So in summary, the Bayesian uh, approach estimate the class condition probability density. Uh, you combine with the prior class probability. So it's based also on the prior uh, a priori probability, you determine the posterior class probability and you derive the decision boundary. So this is the approach, okay? And an alternative approach implemented by neural, neural network is to estimate the posterior probability directly without going through these steps here, i.e. you determine the decision boundaries directly. So this is the Bayesian approach versus the um, the, uh, the neural network approach when you perform classification. Now, um, uh, now this, this was a, a kind of a, a, a explaining what is classification, what, uh, uh, how the Bayesian approach can be used for, which is a, a classical uh, approach used for classification. And now we're comparing it to, instead of going through all these steps, we would like to implement it with just a neural network. Now also, um, uh, there is a new, a, 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 a growing area called Bayesian neural networks or Bayesian deep neural networks. So this is a recent, uh, uh, a, a recent paper, which is available on our on archive, one of our uh, PhD student. Um, so it is a tutorial for deep uh, Bayesian neural networks, if you're interested. And in this case, when you have a neural network, well, as we're going to see later on, 
you don't assume that you have an activation function, um, an activation value here. So when you sum, um, sorry, when you sum your, uh, um, your, um, your, your, your activation, when you compute uh, your sum and so on, you assume that this is not a, a set value, but it's a, it can be a random variable. You can also assume that your weights are random variables and you use the deep Bayesian networks to solve your problem. Thank you.